gaming industry is transforming the entire uh, landscape uh, for digital content, for tokens, cryptocurrencies, uh, the way in which people make a living. And nowhere is this more profoundly true today, especially after the pandemic, uh, than it is in the Philippines. And today I'm speaking with the leader in the Philippines uh, for gaming, uh, for gaming communities, uh, for digital assets, uh, and how that's transforming the lives of ordinary people. So thank you very much, JB Dizon, for joining me today. I am very happy to have uh, met you a few days ago uh, and, and then to do this uh, formal conversation where I want to sort of draw from your mind uh, you know, where this is taking us uh, and how this is going to create uh, a new global ecosystem uh, in terms of uh, livelihoods, uh, transactions and, and everything, okay? So um, you are the co-founder of Yield Yield Guide uh, Games. Um, just talk us through a little bit about your own um, personal journey uh, in cryptocurrencies, uh, in gaming, uh, and in this guild that you have created. Sure. Um, so my background is a game developer. I've been making games since 2003. I was part of the team that created the first game out of the Philippines then. In 2014, I co-founded a mobile game studio called Altitude Games. So we were making mobile games for iOS and Android phones. And in 2017, I got curious about a blockchain when I heard about Ethereum and the concept of smart contracts. So smart contracts are immutable programs that can transfer value in a public blockchain. So in a way, it's a way that uh, you can uh, create a digital, uh, like digital money. And it was very interesting for me because the concept of economies have always existed in online games, but now the, uh, the assets that you create can have real value. So we studied um, smart contracts to see how uh, this could one day potentially impact the game industry. And uh, during that time, in late 2017, um, CryptoKitties uh, released and uh, um, popularized the idea of the non-fungible token or the NFT. And NFTs were different from uh, from fungible or crypto tokens before then, because now you could store unique assets in the blockchain. So they started with cats that had their own unique DNA, but uh, NFTs could be applied to different kinds of assets, especially in-game assets. And yeah, this has really got uh, what hooked me into crypto and from then, from 2018 to now, really experimenting on what uh, and the applications of NFTs and crypto inside of gaming. So um, the game that you originally um, invented, um, what was it called? Um, um, so uh, we, I was part of the Axie Infinity community. Uh, I wasn't part of the development team, but yeah, I've been, uh, have been part of the community been okay. and been. Yeah. So that's the, that was the starting point. That was the the original game, and then and then you developed it from there, um, right? Um, so, you know, what's interesting is that there are 2.8 billion gamers um, around the world uh, who who play on the mobile device. I think close to like three billion gamers around the world. Is that is that about right? Yeah, so, that's right. And about 50 percent of them are in Asia uh, or in the Asia Pacific region. Right. So tell us about the evolution of the gaming industry. I mean, you just gave us your own evolution, which actually is the evolution of the gaming industry, which is uh, it started um, as um, as a game and then and then it went on to um, um, uh, the blockchain. And, and, uh, and, and now it's, um, it's it's crypto native, meaning that you, you actually generate income by playing. Right. Um, so give us a sense of how the gaming industry has evolved and where it is today. The game industry has evolved a lot in the last, I would say, 30 years. And the predominant business model in the last 10 years or so were free-to-play games. So these were games that you could download for free, whether on the PC or on your phone. Then uh, the game would monetize uh, via in-app purchases that people would pay for things inside the game. Now, these things were consumable and the players didn't really own them. When you deleted the game, you basically had nothing left. And uh, with the advent of player and gaming, putting game assets in the blockchain, 
now you have permanent items that have uh, that have some value that other people might want to pay for. So this is a big shift because uh, of all the time that people spend in gaming, it's usually purely for entertainment, meaning that you do not get any value back. Um, now you can essentially play the game and create, earn, and own assets that uh, that have a real uh, value in uh, in the real world. Right. So this this is uh, XC Infinity. Is that's the one that you you uh, uh, that's the game that you've worked on? Uh, I didn't make the game, but yes, as part of the community. Okay, a part of the community, right? So now explain to me. Um, the, the whole idea of a guild, uh, why is a guild important? Yeah, A lot of people play games like Axie and other games because uh, apart from enjoying the game, they want to be able to earn some money and then own some assets. And uh, uh, typically, a lot of people who want to play the game don't want to buy into the NFTs first. They want to play the game and see if they enjoy it. So as a guild, we buy the assets and uh, lend them out to our player community who loves discovering these games as a way for them to try them out and earn some rewards. We split the revenue with, uh, with our uh, community. Uh, we typically keep only 10% of any rewards uh, that are earned. Most of it goes to, to the player and then their, their community manager. Um, so yeah, so the guild organizes people and then uh, we buy the assets for and lend them out so that people, gamers, can try out these games, earn some value, some tokens or NFTs without having to pay anything up front. Now, are you a global originator of this idea of bringing gamers together this way and, and renting out the assets to them? Um, well, uh, there were some people who were doing this in a smaller way. Uh, along with some friends of mine in 2020, but uh, uh, as the first guild that was professionally funded by Venture Capital, yes. Right. And how much of it is, uh, how much technology is involved uh, in creating platforms like a guild? Is it a platform or is it a network? Um, you know, how does the, how does the technology behind uh, work? Yeah, I would say that it's both. Uh, we are, I would say, uh, uh, we, we're a network and a community of people, uh, but we also have these assets. So a big part of it is organizing these assets, being able to uh, transfer them uh, in an automated manner, put them in the hands of our players safely, um, and building profiles so that we can discover what games they like. So it is both a network and a platform. Yeah. So if a, if a guild becomes successful, uh, does it operate more, you know, just like a, like a Facebook or a... Um, you know, a, a platform in that way, uh, or guild, do guilds uh, or can guilds uh, work with other guilds, um, you know, and create a kind of a global network? Yeah, so we're actually uh, creating a global network. So uh, we've uh, pioneered the use of sub-DAOs, which are guilds that are uh, affiliated with uh, YDG, but also have their own geograph geographical focus. So uh, last year, we started with a YDG Southeast Asia sub-DAO, which covers the rest of Southeast Asia outside of the Philippines. We also have partnered guilds in India with IndieGG, LATAM with OLA, BASE in Brazil, Jambo in Africa, and elsewhere. It's got a better chance of not becoming siloed in that if you belong to one guild, you cannot belong to another guild and transfer your assets around. Uh, but that uh, it can actually be a network of guilds. Uh, Absolutely. Industry, right? That's now, exactly what we're doing. Yeah. Actually, uh, this conversation is a little bit more uh, complex than, um, than, 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 you know, the conversation we're having because uh, there are people uh, watching this uh, video who know nothing about gaming and there are people who are already into gaming and, you know, want to ask the hard questions. So I'm trying to straddle uh, the whole range. Uh, so let's not assume that um, you know, that uh, the people who are watching this uh, understand everything that we're doing. Okay, so the conversation we've had so far is there is gaming uh, and there is uh, the building of assets in gaming where people buy and sell the assets created in gaming. There is the, um, there's the guilds um, created uh, in order to help, um, you know, people who don't want to be involved in the assets to sort of play in the game um, at the same time rent them assets, make it cheaper for um, individuals to participate, and then create communities around that. And that's what Gaby is involved in. Uh, and then uh, the questions that I have, which is 
where is all this heading, right? Um, give me a sense of why you think uh, you have been so successful in the last two years. Okay, so uh, so with what we're doing, we're giving people access to the global crypto economy, um, which before then, uh, most people had to be able to buy in, whether it was Bitcoin or Ethereum or other tokens. You had to buy into it to, uh, to participate in the global crypto economy. With what we're doing with Play to Earn, you can now participate in the global economy with your time and skill and effort instead of money. And I think this is a big unlock to most of the people around the world, especially in developing markets who could use uh, the economic uh, access to crypto without having to buy into the first place. So a lot of the people who are in our guild are from developing markets, whether it's Southeast Asia or Latin America. Um, and yeah, they're learning about crypto and Web3, uh, onboarding with the wallet, and uh, doing this without having any uh, buy-in to start with. So I think that's uh, very important. Okay. Um, now, uh, talk to me a little bit about your relationship with Union Digital Bank. Uh, this is a traditional bank, or rather this is a digital version of a traditional bank. Um, and why that relation, how that relationship came about and why that relationship is important. Uh, Union Digital is very interesting because they, uh, they're trying to create a, a new digital bank from the ground up rather than create a digital extension of an existing bank. They naturally partnered with us because uh, I think Union Digital is really looking at the use of blockchain technology to deliver its uh, products as a pure digital bank. And uh, a lot of the player community that we have within YDG is very savvy on uh, crypto and would probably be very interested to use uh, a pure digital bank such as uh, Union Digital. Okay, um, when Union Digital Bank started, uh, they didn't start because of you, right? Because of the relationship. No, no. Okay, so they wanted to be a digital bank, and and at some point, I have to, uh, you know, speak with the um, the the founder of uh, Union Digital Bank which is actually a subsidiary of a traditional bank, which is uh, Union Bank of the Philippines. How does it work? How does the relationship work? And here, um, your entire ecosystem is crypto native, meaning that um, you don't participate by putting cash or, or, or exchanging cash into crypto. You actually generate your own crypto when, you, when your gamers participate in your ecosystem. Then the question is, how do you monetize it? How do you... Uh, make it, um, you know, how do you spend that money, right? Uh, and that's where the relationship with Union Digital Bank comes in. Uh, what are some of the regulatory hurdles that you faced uh, in, in uh, working with uh, Union Digital Bank? And, um, and, and what are some of the uh, real relationship, uh, you know, the real benefits that uh, the customers get? When our community plays these games and earns crypto rewards, whether they're uh, tokens or NFTs, of course, they would want to find a way to, uh, to cash out and uh, be able to spend that money and, uh, in the real world. And that's where uh, digital banks like uh, using digital comes in. YGG itself does not touch uh, fiat money. Um, so we don't convert tokens to pesos, US dollars for any uh, of, of our community. We simply give them access to the crypto economy uh, via uh, via the NFTs that we own. And that's where partners such as Union Digital come in. They help convert the assets into Philippine pesos, for example, so that people can actually enjoy the fruits of their labor uh, in these games and digital economies. Now, uh, some of the regulatory hurdles, that means what the regulator wants to know. Uh, now, does that make you a regulated entity uh, as a result? Uh, because your the assets are... Uh, are real uh, or rather can be transferred into cash. Yeah, well, so the regulation is around the transfer itself uh, from crypto uh, to fiat. So um, so our partners are, are regulated by the central bank to have an exchange license, for example. Um, so for ourselves, because we're, we're uh, dealing exclusively within the digital realm, we don't deal with those regulations directly. However, we make sure that we partner with uh, with licensed uh, and regulated institutions. Now, uh, but then that creates the possibility of money laundering, for example, which is essentially, in your case, is making money out of nothing. Then, then oh, here, I've got money. Uh, you know, so uh, how does the, how do the regulators get around that? 
uh, and and um, and therefore, you know, you see yourself being regulated at some point. Contrary to popular belief, um, blockchain is actually terrible for money laundering because the uh, the transactions are completely on chain. And if you uh, cash out your uh, crypto, for example, in an exchange that requires KYC, then it's easy to trace all of your transactions back to the originator. So while, of course, uh, money laundering probably exists, it exists at a smaller magnitude than actual cash, which is harder to trace. And uh, there are now companies that deal with uh, actually tracing funds um, and helping uh, helping institutions like uh, police investigators, for example, figure out the tr uh, flow of money uh, on the blockchain. Now, um, in terms of um, moving your the technology that you're using onto blockchain, uh, what are some of the things that you're working on right now uh, to enhance that experience uh, of the players, the gamers uh, on blockchain? Uh, I would imagine that speed is one of the issues. Um, um, the other would be, you know, what data do you capture uh, in the transactions uh, and then making it immutable and, and uh, transferable. Uh, so I'm just imagining these things, but what are some of the technology issues that, um, you are dealing with as you make that transition? Yeah, so uh, we're creating player profiles for people so that their wallets can show uh, and reflect the experience that they have playing different games, interacting with crypto protocols. So think of it as a way for people to get experience badges that denote them as uh, just having tried or experienced different kinds of things or fluent in different skills. And this will uh, give them the opportunity to unlock unique experience where people may be paid, for example, to try out a new game or a new protocol depending on what their experience is on chain. And yeah, this is the ecosystem that we want to build so that people can build their own uh, on-chain reputation. So how much AI is involved in that? Is, would you even say that there's AI there somewhere, like uh, being able to process a, a lot of data and, and, um, and draw um, a profile? Uh, eventually, once there's enough data for us to crunch, yes, so there will be AI involved. But um, it's more of creating a like reputation system uh, to start with. Okay. Now, as uh, your platform becomes popular in the Philippines, uh, where are you seeing interest coming from uh, that is adding to the, the community that you're creating? Yeah, so we're seeing interest from a lot of uh, uh, traditional companies that want to be involved with uh, crypto and the metaverse and uh, these uh, online uh, uh, virtual worlds and economies. So from banks um, to retail companies, uh, this is a lot of interest in what the metaverse could be or what are these economies that are being built on top of blockchain. So we're helping translate that knowledge to the uh, corporate partners that we are talking to. Corporate partners. So uh, how do they, how are they involved in, in the ecosystem? They're trying to figure out, a lot of companies are trying to figure out now whether you're a bank or a mall or a telco uh, to figure out what your presence will be uh, in online virtual worlds in the metaverse. We, we're having a lot of those uh, active discussions right now. Okay. Um, Unity, uh, that's the Apple um, community, um, you know, doing what I as a lay person think is similar to what you're doing, except that they're doing it with um, Pokemon Go, um, uh, Monu Monument Valley, and so on. Um, what are the similarities with what Apple is, uh, these big guys are doing uh, and what you're doing? I think uh, building gaming communities is something that is uh, really common. Uh, the big difference is that we are encouraging people to own their own assets in their own wallet and be able to uh, kind of build a portfolio that, uh, that reflects real value from the efforts that we put uh, with gaming. Speaking of real value, uh, in the two years that you've uh, seen growth in, how, how, what is the size of that growth? Like in 2020, uh, how many gamers do you have? And today, how many gamers and a certain valuation to the, the amount of transactions that take place? Yeah, so uh, right now we are uh, close to around 30,000, what we call scholars or the people who are borrowing our assets uh, to earn money. So these are happening across uh, games like Axie Infinity, but also League of Kingdoms, uh, Splinterlands, 
um, and Cyball. So, and now we've partnered with over 40 games to buy their assets to lend out to their communities. Most of these games haven't launched yet, but a lot of them are coming out anytime between the next six to 24 months. So when you get investors, uh, and, and just talk to me a little bit about the investors that you have secured and the kind of investment targets that you're looking at in order for you to grow uh, and the utility of the investments. What is it mostly used for? Uh, is it for development work uh, or is it for the tokens themselves? So we, uh, uh, we, we have taken on investment so that we can buy the NFT assets that we can lend out to our community. And we're also uh, hiring a development team that are creating products that will help our community kind of have an on-chain reputation system and be able to experience these different games. Okay. Uh, and where are you with investments at the moment? Are um, you... we, we've, uh, we've raised a, uh, a little over $20 million from global investors such as uh, Andreessen Horowitz, uh, Bitcraft, uh, Block Tower Capital, and uh, a lot more. When the tokens start to lose value, um, you know, because it's market forces, uh, what happens to the community? Um, and, uh, you know, how does that evolve? Uh, obviously, this is a maturing industry. Um, you know, uh, token valuations don't just keep going up, it goes up, down. And Bitcoin right now, as I speak to you, uh, is on its way down for now, at least. So um, what effect does it have on your community? What risks does it create for you as a business? Um, and, and how do you think it will work out? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, there's a lot of volatility in, uh, in these uh, online digital markets, especially in the crypto market. So uh, we focus a lot on education. Uh, of course, as prices fall, then the value of uh, people's earnings are less. Um, and uh, we just want to make sure that people understand the risks risk involved. And that's why we want people to earn this value with their time and skill and energy instead of buying in so that people are able to earn these assets with uh, basically swept equity instead of uh, having to buy with their own money. And then as they develop a kind of more nuanced view on uh, what these markets are, then maybe they can make more informed decisions if they would want to invest personally as well. Very important point you're pointing out. So it's that uh, earning play to earn model uh, that creates the integrity of your ecosystem. Uh, it is so easy to uh, just allow people to buy in, that is, you know, go to uh, Union Digital Bank, um, you know, exchange your cash for crypto and then, and then get in. But is there, are there, I mean, th that ability to come in through buy in exists on your platform, doesn't it? Well, no, we, so we don't, uh, we don't actually get people to buy or sell anything on our platform directly. We just give them access to assets uh, where they can earn from uh, the games that they're playing. So it's purely uh, play to earn, and then, and then you build an ecosystem from there. Correct. What is next steps for you, um, you know, on, on blockchain uh, token? Um, you know, what are the things that you're working on right now? So next step for us is to really expand our coverage. Um, uh, we've barely scratched the surface with people who know about Play to Earn. We want to partner with more games so that people can have different choices on what they want to do when they get to the metaverse. And yeah, just make this available to anyone in the world who, who wants to be part of the metaverse or in these online virtual worlds and make, uh, uh, make some money out of it. So when you say metaverse, is that your metaverse or is that a ecosystem of metaverses um, interacting with each other? So this is something which uh, I, I, even I want to visualize. Uh, you know, how does gaming and community uh, exist in a metaverse? Yeah, it's really the games that we're part of by uh, the NFTs that we, uh, that we buy into, the games that are attached to them. And that's where we send our communities to, to be part of these different games. It, therefore, in the metaverse universe, uh, tokens have to be interoperable. It, it, it needs to be easily right. transmutable, right? Um, what's the discipline that's creating that in your in your world, in the gaming uh, uh, community? You know, others like you talking to each other. Uh, what's making it possible uh, for that to be, uh, you know, network quality interoperability? 
So uh, what makes the interoperability possible is because the assets are built on a common blockchain. So that means it's easy to transfer value from one person to the other. Are the tokens available on OpenSea, on, on NFT um, you know, platforms for, for people to trade outside of the, of the ecosystem? Yes, yes. They're based on a common token standard, which means that they're uh, easily tradable with one another. Now, um, I'm asking you all these questions because uh, you're evolving uh, in a way that is so uh, antithesis to the way in which banking evolved uh, or financial services evolved. Uh, financial services uh, is essentially didn't create interoperability, but it created a huge monolithic uh, payments infrastructure, uh, you know, uh, globally as well as uh, nationally, uh, and it's um, and it's a closed infrastructure, um, you know. And I'm uh, I'm talking to you to understand, um, you know, how the metaverse uh, and and the gaming universe. Uh, is evolving and the disciplines that are being put in place, um, you know, as, they, as it grows. You've, you've actually pointed out to me, for example, um, uh, that firstly, there is a common understanding that you, it's transmutable uh, and, and, that, um, um, and that you want them to be uh, token native uh, in order to create the discipline of actually earning the, the token and therefore, um, you know, the, you, you create the ecosystem from there. Um, uh, and, and so on. So you've given me a few ideas in, in that way. Um, so are you looking to raise more funds now? Uh, you know, is, is, there, uh, uh, is there a need for uh, even more capital to grow what you're building? Yeah, it's possible that we'll be raising more funds in the near future. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Gaby. Thank you for spending time with me today. All right. Thanks a lot. And